All right, Saxo fans, episode 35. So, you will notice I am now going to turn my attention to the bottom end. All of the top end stuff you've, you've seen over the past 30 episodes, it seems like it's taken, is all on the shelf to the left of me. It's all painted and everything's done. So I can just sort of forget about that for the time being and focus on this. Now, today's episode is purely going to focus on getting the block back on the stand. So it, obviously I need to strip all this down, so we'll take the sump off, take the oil pump and everything out, take the seals off, uh, strip all the pistons and rods out. Basically, we'll have a naked block um, very shortly. Then we're going to send the block away uh, and it's going to be machined and cleaned and painted and then we'll bring it back, we'll put it back on the stand ready for rebuild and obviously some other bits and bobs along the way. So. First things first, we need to get this stripped and laid out on the bench and obviously we'll inspect the block. I'm not too worried about the condition of the bores because we are going to be machining and re and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it is what it is at this stage. So, and obviously new bearings and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's get this apart. Right then folks, sump was off, not too bad in the end. I just wanted to draw your attention to this. So I'm just gonna zoom in and look at this in the uh, in the oil pump pickup. If you can see that, I'm sorry the quality's so bad. But that is a little bit of a, like a plastic connection to a sensor or something wedged in there. That could have been, um, that could have been dangerous. Right then, Saxo fans, you saw me there take all the pistons out, albeit I did drop one. Yeah, luckily I don't need these, so it's not a problem, there's no damage. 
Um, right, so I just thought what I wanted to check is, obviously I've looked at the bearings as they came out and they all look in really, really good condition. Sort of typical for an engine that's done 108,000 miles or whatever this did. Um, and I just wanted to check the end float because it felt, you know, just by hand, it felt like a reasonable amount, but I thought I'll just check it. So if we look at the Haynes manual, so if you've got one of these Haynes manuals, if you go to page 2C2, you will see uh, crankshaft end float just here, 0 0.07 to 0 0.27 of a millimeter. That's what we want. So, got my DTI set up here, it's on a magnet mounted to the block, which is just on one of the um, counterweights of the crank. I've set it at zero, there or thereabouts, and we'll just see what it is. So I'll move it a few times. Just need to adjust the zero a little bit. Okay. So what I'm getting there is that's just, just beyond zero there. So it's not the most glamorous of gauges, it's not super expensive. But what I'm getting is about 0.17 of a mil. Which is great. Because that is well in spec. So yeah, for a, for an engine that's done 108,000 miles, I'm really pleased with the condition. So it just tells me that obviously it's had regular oil changes and has been relatively well looked after. Anyway, let's move on to taking the crank out. Right, that's the engine apart then. So um, the next step with the block is to go and get it all cleaned up and all that kind of stuff. And I'll talk about that when we actually do it, but I'm waiting for my pistons to arrive um, before we, we do anything further with that. So in the meantime, while we're waiting, just gonna clean up the front and rear seal. This is the rear seal. I'm very familiar with these because on my old red supercharged um, Saxo VTS, you know, many moons ago, I had to change one of these. And obviously to get to this, it's a uh, gearbox out, clutch off, flywheel off, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, just to change a rear seal. But anyway, so I'm gonna knock this one out, we'll get the little plate and everything all cleaned up, and we'll do the same process with the front seal too.
Right then, rear seal all done, front side has been painted, rear side has been left unpainted and essentially raw material because that's a ceiling face, as has the bottom face here because that's a ceiling face as well. So that's all done and of course plated the bolts. I didn't do just that one, I also did the front seal too and plated the bolts. So, two more things that I can tick off the list that are ready to go. I need to actually buy the seals, obviously, uh, but these are obviously just the plates that, that support them. So, these are going to get bagged up and stuck on the shelf with all the other bits that are waiting to go on. Let's do the next thing. All right, Saxo fans, we've had a delivery. It's an important delivery. We'll do a little unboxing process. So, first of all, bear with me. ARP Comrade bolts and PC rod, forged rod, I beam, four of. Happy days. We'll just open one of these little badges up so you guys can see it. I have already had a quick glance, obviously. So, PC, I-beam, forged comrade, number one, two, three, four, happy days, right, secondly, in box number two, We have got a sticker, because you always get stickers, rings, 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 circlips, gudgeon pins, gudgeon pins, gudgeon pins, and then low compression. Forge piston. Number one, two, more circlips. Three, four. That's it. That's basically an expensive box, but a very exciting box because obviously it means we can build up the bottom end of the engine very soon. Obviously, I still need to grab all the bearings and stuff, but I can do that. So yeah, an exciting one. Now, I will just talk about piston size. Okay, I just popped one of the standard pistons on the bench here with the rod attached to it. This is one that came out of the engine. So these are a 78.5 mil piston, gives you a 1587, I think, cc engine. Um, what I wanted to achieve was a true 1600. So I've gone for a 79 mil piston. So obviously because of that, I'm gonna have to machine um, the cylinder bores to take that oversized piston. It's a half mil oversize. Um, so yeah, pretty standard. I'm, I'm fairly sure the block can can take that. It's obviously only a half mil um, increase, so not not massive. Um, yeah, so that'll give us a true 1600. And I know that obviously all the cylinder bores will be fresh as a daisy, brand new, uh, essentially creating what will be almost a brand new engine. Um, yeah, so that's it. So the next step really is to get the block over to the machine shop, give them the pistons and the clearances that we need. Um, we'll get it machined, we'll get it all dipped, uh, and all that stuff and then ready for paint and we can start actually putting something back together. So anyway, let's um, let's take the block off the stand now then and um, we'll take it over to the machine shop.
Right well, Saxo fans, the block is back. Been waiting a little while for this, but I'm pleased to say it's now back in my possession. So, I used a company called Sprint Engines. They're based just up the road for me. I'm in rugby. So, um, if you need to use somebody for machining work, I'd, I'd say they're highly recommended. They're very good. Um, so, what they did for me, as you saw in the videos just a moment ago, they stuck it in a big barrel, essentially de-rusting fluid. I don't know what chemical was in there. I've obviously got rid of all of the old detritus that, that was on the block. Uh, it obviously went in and out of there a few times and obviously washed a number of times. Um, obviously, that's a process they're familiar with, so I'm happy with that. It's obviously de-rusted. Then it was bored out, obviously, for the bigger piston that we've gone for. So this is now officially over 1600 cc, 1607, if you believe the Woosner website. Um, and then obviously it was rehomed as well. So the next steps for me are to get this through the wash. I just want to make sure there's nothing in there that's obviously that shouldn't be, just for my own peace of mind really. So I'll stick it through my parts wash, get it through all the galleries and all that kind of stuff and give it a good clean. I'll take it out of there. I'm going to give it a good dose of WD everywhere so it doesn't rust on all of these external bits and bobs. Um, I'll put some build oil on the cylinder bores and obviously on all the bearing faces and things like that so they don't start to rust. And then at that point, I think I'll start cleaning this down ready for, or the external faces are ready for paint. That's the plan, I think. And then obviously once we're painted, we can start putting some of the fancy bits and bobs on that have already been um, refurbed as you've seen in previous videos all of like the alternator setup and all of the bracketry for all of that you know it can all go on all the engine mount brackets and stuff you know they're, big, they're quick wins dead easy it'll look good straight away so that's the plan um, I'm going to do that in the next video I just appreciate this one might be a little bit shorter but it took an awful long time for all of this to happen and it cost a lot of money you know if anybody who's bought pistons and rods recently yeah, they're, they're expensive, so um, you know I don't have an endless pot of money, so I do need to sort of chip away at these things slowly. So I am going to end it here. Um, hopefully, this episode was an interesting one for you. Hopefully, the next one comes around a little bit quicker, and uh, yeah, we'll actually start building some some bits and bobs up. But anyway, so in the meantime, um, I'm going to get on with that, and I'll see you next time.